Have no fear, the Rings of Power showrunners are here to go ahead and reinvigorate your excitement for the Season 2 premiere coming at the end of August. I know I personally can definitely wait indefinitely. I mean, after looking at that trailer, outside of the questionable costume designs, I mean, nothing could put me off of a series that I want less than zero to do with. But, hey guys, they did this a big committal that they're going to be far more lore accurate this time around. Season 1, you know, hey man, it was a smash hit. A smash hit that like 60% of audiences didn't even see all the way through to the end. But this time around, everything is going to be better. Okay, we're going to find new and interesting ways of butchering the character of Galadriel. We're going to find new wigs to put Sauron in that he's going to use to trick the fairest, the wisest people of Middle-earth. And yeah, we're going to bring in legacy characters and like in the words of the little platoon, shout out old Tom Bombadil is making his debut in the series, right guys? And um, his bright blue Bright blue his jacket was, and his boots were yellow. Green were his girdle and his breeches, all of leather. He wore this tall hat, a swan, f a wing feather. So the other rings of power, so he wears a hat and wears dirty, disgusting, drab clothes. But yeah, man, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be the life raft. This is going to be the buoy that Rings of Power offers long-term Tolkien fans who would actually know the name Tom Bombadil. Because even fans of the Peter Jackson movies from the early 2000s, or hell, even people that wade into the Hobbits, ill-fated trilogy, don't know who Tom Bombadil is. So you're trying to make an appeal. We're trying to make an appeal to purists, to book fans, people that you already pissed off with season one, continue to piss off with your desecration of the tales from the Silmarillion. Good luck on that one, man. Like, this is so dumb. It's almost as dumb as using the same actor for a character known for his shape-shifting capacities and simply thinking that he's going to go ahead and convince anybody he's somebody different by putting a blonde wig and some pointy ears on him. Tom Bombadil finally steps forth and rings of power an exclusive first look. Well, Vanity Fair, do beguile us with some of your tales. Tom Bombadil has finally been invited on one of the long and winding trips through Middle Earth. The mystical character is one of the more offbeat figures in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings saga, a woodland dwelling man with an ethereal presence and a pashan for nonsense songs and brightly colored clothes. So yeah, we'll just once again, you know, go ahead and put him in dirty drab crap. But hey, he's got a hat, guys. Who helps rescue the hobbits from peril early in the first books? Yes, I think at the Barrow Downs, that's where he's kind of shining. Okay, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring, as much as he stands apart, his name will likely draw a blank from anyone who hasn't read the novels since the two primary uh, film retellings were all Bakshi's Yes, 1978 opus, Peter Jackson's uh, Oscar-winning live-action trilogy, and even the BBC radio drama. Don't even bother mentioning Tom Bombadil, because even from some fans of the books, Tom's, Tom's an interesting character that Tolkien included in his tales, because Tom, yeah, Tom, those of you who don't know, is unaffected by the corrupting force of the ring. He's kind of analogous, if you remember Two Towers, which you probably should, even if you've seen it once. It is, in fact, the masterpiece that I would consider. It's probably my favorite. It's probably my favorite of the three. He's a lot like Treebeard, in so much as he's just this old, wizened figure that has just been around forever. Nothing, uh, nor no mortal issues really seem to care or trouble him all that much. And it's even theorized, it's like, okay, instead of Frodo, why not just give the ring, because it's just of no effect on Tom, why not just give him the ring and send him to Mordor? Oh, and the way that Tom, or I'm sorry, the way that uh, J.R.R. Tolkien wrote this is, um, yeah, Tom would probably just lose the ring out of sheer ambivalence and apathy towards the entire cause because Tom's just Tom, and Tom does Tom things. Which is actually probably a pretty big reason as to why Amazon brought him in, because Amazon's just going to do Amazon things. Sanctity of Tolkien's writings be damned. Rings of Power, the Amazon Prime uh, series based on, Tol based on Tolkien's, huh? Sure. Uh, ancient history of his fantasy realm will break that tradition of exclusive, or of, yeah, exclusion and finally feature Tom Bombadil. Along with his jolly songs and his flamboyant wardrobe, they're going to make him gay, huh? Uh, second season begins August 29th. Bombadil was described in Tolkien's book as older than old, a benevolent entity who began life around the time all life began. 
So yeah, around the song of creation time. Like, he's an old dude, okay? So he's actually somebody that could be in the second age, unlike their repurposed Gandalf that isn't quite Gandalf because they don't have the license to the name Gandalf. It's so great that Amazon is trying to tell multiple different stories. Like, we want hobbits. There were no hobbits in the second age, and you don't have uh, the rights to use the hobbits. We'll just create the Harfoots. I'm sorry, what? Anyways, yeah, a benevolent entity began, yeah, around uh, all life began. So his existence is of an earlier era, thousands of years before the events of the Lord of the Rings. Yes, and also thousands of years before the second age but we don't need to get into specifics like that because amazon isn't telling the possible yeah sequel oh, rather my mistakes are keep on jumping ahead because that's what amazon's also doing with the lore uh fits with the canon established by the author 1937 a letter to the publisher mulling the possible uh, sequel to the hobbit tolkien described bombadil as the spirit of the vanishing oxford and berkshire countryside yeah which is completely and totally absent from the first season but trust me guys it's going to be there in the second one because we're going to end up getting the history and we're going to get the backstory of baradur just like you did with mordor idiots now the author bristled at the notion that he wrote an allegory but it is clear he saw bombadil as a nature personified right up with the character's ambivalence about interfering with the larger world around him exactly that's why i gave you the backstory with him and potentially the ring that left showrunners oh those two hacks Guys that weren't even good enough to be associated with Bad Reboot. Uh, J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay to figure out exactly uh, how he might turn up in their show and why. Yeah, was he ever referenced by Tolkien in the Second Age? Yeah, don't worry about that. We'll figure out new and interesting ways to put this, I don't know, generic bum into the story. Because that's not Tom. It's not Tom at all. There's a reason why he hasn't been in pre er, prior adaptations. Because in some ways, he's sort of the anti-dramatic character. Payne tells Vanity Fair for this exclusive first look. He's not a character who has a particularly strong agenda. Yeah, you could go ahead and have a comic relief character. Several successful shows do this all the time. Find a way to work it in because they're talented, but you guys are hacks. He observes drama, but largely doesn't participate in it. In Fellowship of the Ring, the characters kind of just go there and hang out for a while, and Tom drops some knowledge on them. That's the... That's how you'd characterize the Fellowship of the Ring. Characters just kind of go there and hang out for a while. Where's there? How long's a while? And, a oh man, these are kids asked to recreate the Mona Lisa, and they're doing so on toilet paper with crayons. Knowledge, that's not particularly relevant to anything that they're doing or about to do. Fantastic stuff. But knowledge is not particularly relevant to anything they're doing or about to do. That's a great way to sum up the Rings of Power in but a sentence. Bombadil first turns up when the hobbits run afoul of Old Man Willow, an angry tree in the Old Forest, who swallows Merry and Pippet uh, in the folds of his bark. Bombadil sings a song as soon as the savage sprout, causing it to release the halflings. After the brief stay with him and his wife, Goldberry, uh, little ones depart. Part. Later, they rescued again in Bombadil, and they are captured by malevolent spirits of the Barrow Whites. Yeah, there you go, and sees them in an ancient cemetery. Yes, a Barrow's old English for burial ground, and White is a kind of ghost. I'm so glad you guys filled us in on that one. Uh, here's my idea, okay, because you see this big shot that's right there. That's going to be not Gandalf that's going to be getting a talking to by Tom Bombadil, and uh, because Nori's going to be with not Gandalf, uh, Goldberry's going to go along with them on their trail. I haven't heard anybody else talk about that, but that's immediately what I'm going to be putting together on this one because Amazon wants more diversity in their show. And guess what? It's an all women. This is this is this is what's really driving their marketing. They have all female directors this time around. It's not like we're fixing the writing. Still got the same showrunners and all that stuff. Jennifer Sulky is still in charge of this abomination. The most expensive TV series of all time that is rapidly heading to cancellation because nobody cares. Nobody cares. Like hearing the name Tom Bombadil might tickle some people's fancy in regards to purists of the lore. Yeah, see, that's definitely not Gandalf. That's right there. Jesus Christ, I think I ended up calling it. Look at that. Look at this! Does this look like some magical guy? Oh look at he got he has yellow boots this time around. Does that look any different than anybody else in this drab generic show? Absolutely not. Like I was saying before, is Tom's is Tom Bombadil gonna register with the normies that you desperately need to pay attention to this show? Absolutely not. When it comes to Lord of the Rings, people know Mary, Pippin, Frodo, Sam, Gandalf, Aragon, Gollum. There's a reason. Warner Brothers. Your fellow rights holders to the Tolkien estate. There's a reason that they said, hey, we're coming out. We are we got Peter Jackson back, who's just as synonymous with any of those characters with the Lord of the Rings. He's coming back, and the first thing we're doing is Andy Serkis, and he's going to be doing a Gollum film. Why the hell do we need a Gollum film? 
It doesn't matter. That's why they led with that. And oh, we're going to do we're going to be doing the Strider Tales, the Strider Chronicles, whatever they're ultimately going to call them. I think it's a three part because, of course, a three part telling of what Strider was doing before he assumed the mantle of the King of Gondor. OK, they're going to be doing pre Aragorn stuff because, of course, that's what you lead with. Don't go with tertiary characters that have been left out of every other popular telling of this tale. It's a desperate plea to fans, but fans have already given up on this show a long time ago, so good job, Amazon. We know that you're flush with money and you think that, you know, you're riding high right now because of the success of Fallout, but just, just get ready to be brought back to reality very, very soon once you start releasing this show and nobody gives a shit about it. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.